Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about a brand new QNAV, which is something I've said a lot. Let's face it, if you've been following this channel for the last few months, you've heard me say I'd like to talk about a brand new QNAV a bunch of times. But the difference with today's video and all of those videos is this is a NAS with such a broad appeal that a number of you are going to be excited about it. If you haven't already read the title of this video, which is a bit weird to be honest, I want to talk about the brand new D series from QNAP. I want to talk about the TS253D, 453D, and 653D. This is a new series of two, four, and six bay NAS devices that's basically their newest generation of NAS for 2020. It's the follow up to the popular 65, um, the 53A, the 53B, and the 53B E series, with this new device arriving with pretty much everything upgraded the internals and the externals there is a hell of a lot to talk about in today's video now it's worth mentioning that the majority of today's information has come from a leak and unfortunately of all the lovely information that was included in that leak one thing i don't know is what the chassis will look like however i think it's worth highlighting that qnap have kind of got this new design here that's the be series there and then we've got the new 251d and i do think the new unit is going to look something like this. I do think it's going to be there and again there's going to be the four bay and the six bay model and I think they're all going to utilize this same chassis but what color they go for who's to say it's a bit early doors for that but what do we know so far well this new series of NAS arrives with a CPU that's brand new on the scene of NAS it's the J4125 it's a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst per core up to 2.7 gigahertz that's a big deal. It has a tremendously high score on CPU benchmark. Hopefully that's on screen somewhere now. And then on top of that, it's also got embedded graphics, UHD graphics, it's, um, Intel, in, in, uh, Intel Integrated Graphics 630, which again means transcoding is going to be mwah, great. It's not going to compete with some i7, but it's still really, really good for the range they are aiming for here. And if we're going to use some of the release logic and pricing that we've seen on the likes of the 51D, I do think we're going to have a NAS that's going to be a force to be reckoned with when it's released. Now, that CPU is backed up with DDR4 memory. Almost certainly it's going to be either 2 or 4 gig of memory at launch, which can be upgraded officially to 8 gig of memory. And you better believe I'm going to try and put 16 gig in that just to see what happens. In terms of ports and connections on the rear, we have some more interesting details. First and foremost, just like its predecessors, it's going to arrive with a PCIe slot on the rear. But the PCIe slot on this new NAS is going to be a PCIe Gen 2 times 4 So in other words, like this one and better than this one. That slot is going to allow you to add increased network connections, M2 SSD and NVMe cache cards and combination cards in the QM2 series. But you might not need to do that because the device also arrives with 2.5 GBE ports, namely two of them. That means that this device arrives with, with link aggregation, up to 5 gigabit of Ethernet. And that is on a standard device. Remember, both of these devices here, 1 GBE. That device, 2 times 2.5 GBE. A big, big step up. On top of that, it arrives with an HDMI port and it's HDMI 2.0, which means 4K at 60 frames per second. So if you've enjoyed QNAP NASAs in the past, you're going to see a lot of great stuff coming out of this brand new unit, I've got to tell you. Now, on top of that, there's not much more that I know about this device apart from some supposition and stuff that we can reverse engineer. So first and foremost, it's going to have USB ports. Of course it's going to have USB ports. But we don't know for certain whether it's going to be USB 3.1 Gen 2 or indeed if it's going to be USB-A or USB-C. I'd like to be hopeful and think it's going to arrive with both of those things or at the very least USB-C because USB-C is growing in popularity all the time and I do think it's something that's worth noting that NAS brands more and more are adopting this, this connection of USB-C more and more due to its convenience and with QNAP really maximizing things with their expansions that utilize that port as well as Thunderbolt NASes as well I do think we are going to see USB-C on this device now there's no mention of M2 SSD caching bays inside pretty unlikely if I'm honest I think that might be over egg in the pudding if they add it in there that'd be great but then I'd be worried about what it would do to the price because I think the closer they get the price of this device to the BE or the B series, the better it will be for them and everyone involved. But it's not all good news because although I don't know much more than this, it's worth highlighting that 
normally when I get uh, release information in this manner, it's generally about a device that's going to arrive in the next two, three months at the very most. There's been a few exceptions, but for the most part, that's always been the way. Information leaks about a product as it's going through the manufacturing process or maybe during retail packaging. Information just gets out on hardware. So normally when I find out information like this, I'm thinking, ooh, we're looking at a couple of months, three at a push. However, I'm also highly suspicious of the fact that there are huge hardware delays right now worldwide due to issues uh, notwithstanding of trade embargoes all the way through to the coronavirus at this time of um, publication, uh, the recording of this video and just hardware shortages caused by that second factor. If, you're an S if you've been looking for SSDs recently, you must have noticed that a number of SSDs are getting harder and harder to find and the prices are creeping up because of unavailability of not just NAND, but the very cases and chassis and ports that those devices require. The same goes for hard drives and there's some plants out in the east that have still not fully recovered from everything from tsunamis to you know other natural disasters and of course this virus that's been traveling around so consequently as good as this news is it's worth taking hugely on board here that we don't know when it's coming and if your data needs are fairly urgent i would not recommend waiting out for this device because as good as it is and i'll be honest i'm probably going to buy one myself at least the four by anyway as good as it's going to be you don't know when it's coming. And I think that's a very, very important point if you're thinking of waiting for this device or comparing it against the existing uh, range of devices because the BE series is still very formidable and still in my top five of NASs that have ever been uh, around for you mid-range desktop users. And I think it would be remiss of me not to highlight that just because this new device is gonna come at some point in the future, that you should wait for it because there are still some great hardware choices right now for the 251D being a classic example. But I'll wrap things up here. And of course, there is a NAS Compare article in the description where I've detailed a lot more information about this NAS. And of course, the four and the six bay device across the whole series. So I do recommend you check that out. And I will update that article as and when I know more with regards to the price, availability, or maybe even if some of those specifications get better or worse. Do click like if you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more, I recommend you subscribe so I can keep you updated on these new releases in 2020. But otherwise, I will see you next time.